What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. I'm Justin Davis. Today I have a new plane here. This is an FPV race wing or medium range cruiser. You could call it a long range cruiser if you want to add a flight controller and GPS in this one. It is running a very similar setup to a lot of our five inch race quads. We have a five inch tri-blade prop in the back with a 2306 1700 kV motor. And that's a really low kV. And the reason that they chose that for you guys is to make this one a cruiser. If you want this to go really fast, Ali Shimano out there, he put a super large motor on it. And this plane flies really well at high speed. So if you want to make an FPV race plane out of this, you can do that. So uh, I'm not going to do that in my review. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set this one up with our standard 4S1550 battery, which would be in most of our typical race quads. I'm using this Azure prop in the back. It's a 50-40 prop. And we're going to go ahead and send it up in the air. We're going to do some line of sight flying with it. I want to see what the flight characteristics are. I want to see how well this plane will slow down. And I also want to see how it does on the high end of throttle. See if we have any wobbles. It's because some of these planes, they have a little bit of wobble at high speed. Um, on the Zod flight controller, if you turn down the gain, if you have wobble, just turn down your gain with that screwdriver and that'll help stabilize it. But I'm happy that there is tons of room in the back here. So you have two different options with a 20 by 20 mount already set up with all the standoffs there from the company and a 30 by 30 mount option in the back. The Zod flight controller didn't fit on that. So I just put it on some VHB right ahead of all these mounts. We have a 30 amp speed controller here. I've got my XT60 ready to go to plug in and it has a sliding battery bay. The battery is going to mount back here actually. Two bolts will let this slide back and forth so that you can get your CG right. So I used, it's about an inch from the leading edge right here. You put your fingers there. Once you have your battery in there and your front canopy on, it should balance out nice and level for you. If it's a little bit nose heavy, that's better than it being tail heavy. FPB Racewing does not like to be tail heavy. So let's go ahead now and let's put this little dolphin up in the air with the 4S1550 on board. And I'm expecting a really long flight time out of this plane, especially if you want to hook up a Lion system to this one, you could probably get, I don't know, maybe an hour. Um, but we'll, we'll have to see how it does with the 4S1550 today for just a standard battery that you have laying around. Let's see how the dolphin does. Here we go. All right, guys, let's go ahead and do the flight test. Now, I have to tell you, before we even get started, um, I had a 1550 in there. The 4S1550 is the battery we're going to fly today. And the, the coolest thing about it is, is that it came down with, like, another volt left in the battery. I flew for 10 minutes, like, close to 10 minutes, and I still had another volt left. So I think you could get 18 minutes out of a 4S1550, which is really good actually the plane is super light it is somewhere in the neighborhood of um, I would say close to the Zod orbit maybe the Zod orbit is a little bit lighter and you can fly, also fly the same size battery in the Zod orbit you can get a 4s 1550 in the Zod orbit and I'm kind of making a mild comparison to that plane because I really like the Zod orbit and I think that one was probably it should have been sold out um, Pretty quickly because it's just so portable and you can throw it up anywhere and, and fly long range um, you know I've, I've flown the Zod orbit miles out on 600 milliwatt and it'll make it pass three miles easy on 600 uh, this one in particular the first thing I noticed after that crazy sketchy launch um, was that once I got it up and I started playing around with the trims I got my elevator trim right and the nose was up it I noticed that it tracked really well and it has a really nice smooth and easy throttle and flight characteristic it tracks really really well so if you're flying this FPV or you're flying at line of sight you can really see where the plane is going and it's not one of those planes that feels unpredictable on the sticks now I, on mine I added about 15 to 20 percent Expo on all the surfaces uh, so I recommend doing that if you're going to be flying in line sight FPV. That would be the best way to set up. And you can do travel limit as well. So put a little bit of travel limit on your servos so that you're not doing full extension. Unless you want those whippy, you know, snappy type of barrel rolls. Um, and and I'll, I'll test it out. I'll do some barrel rolls here coming up. But my first impression was that, wow, this is really, really a smooth plane to fly. It turns nice. Nice controlled swoopy turns and 
it feels great as far as the tracking. It tracks really nice. And I was trying to find the, the tip stall point, and even on some of my sharpest turns, it never kind of bottomed out and spun out on me. Um, I never found the tipping point on the plane. And for this review, I'm actually, actually going to slow it way down on the throttle and bring it down to like 30% throttle, 25% throttle. And that was enough still to even keep the nose up. So uh, for long range purposes, that's good news because with this low KV motor, 1700 KV, you get to that lowest point of your throttle. And if you're on a Lion pack, Lion packs don't like high throttle anyway, you can probably get 45 minutes to an hour out of this type of motor. Um, and I, I honestly, it, it can be a speed demon if you want it to be. Put that big, big ass race motor on there and um, you can make this thing do 100 miles an hour if you want. So it kind of has a lot of like versatility. And then the back bay in this plane is insane. So it is like uh, a, a flight controller addicts, like heaven as far as some of the other planes. It has a much larger flight controller bay than the Orbit. Uh, the Orbit, I felt like, was kind of crammed, and you know, once you get a larger battery in there, you really don't have a lot of space between the flight controller and the battery. And this plane has so much space in the back that I was able even to just center mount my Zod flight controller with, with some VHB right in the middle of the wing. And there goes my first barrel roll, which I'm very cautious on uh, doing any barrel rolls or loops in a, in a Maiden because bad things can happen. So um, <laughs> you can really find out plane's characteristics when you, you do your first barrel roll. But here I'm getting a little more comfortable with it, and I want to I wanna try some more rolls. I, I think that that one went just fine. And sometimes if you have a little too much expo, it'll be a really slow roll, and it'll surprise you and sometimes you will lose control in those rolls. So um, I'm very cautious and I, I usually try to keep it up pretty high because I, I don't want to crash it today for you guys. Um, I'm going to try not to do a durability test. But my previous, uh, my, my previous landing, I had um, everything fly off of it. One thing about the nose cone is that the magnets work great to hold that nose cone on while you're flying with your GoPro. But if you don't want to lose your GoPro in a kind of a sketchy area to land, you want to figure out a way to, to make that, like maybe even use some wing tape around the front end of it so that that nose cone stays on because mine just flew off and had a giant yard sale. There was like stuff everywhere and the back bay came off. So um, to avoid any long range mishaps, if you're going to fly at long range, use some wing tape over that back hatch, maybe just a piece or two, just to double, you know, reinsure that that hatch won't fly off and into your prop. I've had things like that happen on long range planes where I had something fly off the plane and fly into the prop and that could be a really bad day. But here I'm finding out we're at a really low throttle right here and I love this because this this is very much like the same flight characteristic at low throttle like the Zod Orbit. That's one of those planes that, that flew great at a really low throttle and that's really important if you want to do long range and just have a cruiser. And that was the point of my review, is to show how much of a cruiser the Dolphin is for you guys. Um, low throttle and almost like no stall characteristic for a plane with that much nose on it is actually pretty good. And there we go, like pretty close to the ground. So I'm going to kind of like come out here way out to the outside of the field and uh, make some big sweeping turns, try to get some bleed off some of that airspeed. It took actually quite a bit of field. To, to land this plane. But I mean, I'm uh, three or four feet, five feet off the ground coming across the field right there. And I feel like I have a lot of control with this plane. So I think it would be so much fun to fly this on the FPV. I've really got to put a flight controller in this one for you guys and just take it up with some GPS and have some fun with the different flight modes. I might actually do some iNav on this one. So I think it has a lot of good going for it. It's super lightweight. Go with that low KV motor, and you know you might even be able to get 18 minutes flight time again because I was so surprised when I put my battery on the battery checker and I was still at 15 volt on a 4S battery. That's freaking awesome. And I was actually a little above 15 volt. 
That was cool. So smooth and fast if you want it to be. That was a lot of fun. All right, she's back in one piece. That was so much fun. This is one of those planes that you can fly line of sight. You can put a flight controller in it. You can put GPS on there. You can add a, a fairly large battery in there. I used the 4S 1550 and I got almost eight minutes flight time. I think I could have pushed it up past 10 minutes, but, uh, and if you want to get the CG correct on here, you can have tons of front room for a larger style battery. Um, but you have to put the battery pretty far back if you're going to put a GoPro in the front. So um, there are CG markers on the bottom, but what a fantastic plane to fly today. And uh, super easy to hand launch in just full manual mode, no flight controller today. So I'm very happy with this one and I think uh, it'll definitely get a flight controller and some GPS. Thanks for watching guys. I'll see you on the next one.